Hey! This beef stew is too salty. No way, mother-in-law. You made it. Oh dear. My name is Sarah, 28. I work as a nurse. And by the way, the one cheerfully serving the stew right now isn't my mom, but my mother-in-law, Andrew's mother. Ever since we got married, she's been very affectionate towards me, and even without Andrew, I would visit my in-law's place to cook and eat meals together. I, who don't have a good relationship with my own parents, am closer to my mother-in-law than my own mother. My mother-in-law is a cheerful character, and she raised Andrew and his brother single-handedly after a divorce when Andrew was still a kid. I remember being quite nervous when I first met her, because a married friend once told me. In-laws are people you can never understand in your lifetime. But those fears vanished as soon as I met my mother-in-law. I've always wanted a daughter. We only had rough boys in our house. Thanks for marrying Andrew, she said, warmly gripping my hand. I felt from the bottom of my heart that I would get along with this person. After getting married, she said, I want our relationship to be like friends, so let's avoid formal language from now on. Of course, I was resistant at first, but now we can joke and tease each other. Lately, we have been playing pranks, pretending to be a mother-in-law in DIL with a bad relationship. People are often surprised to learn that we are in-laws. I still use polite language when there are many people gathered, such as for rituals. So, Andrew is working again today? Yeah. It's shift work, so I thought there would be almost no overtime, but he seems to be busy because of a shortage of staff. Hmm. Well, I'm happier to see you, Sarah, than Andrew, so I'm having fun just cooking with you. She said such a happy thing. While we were chatting, my cell phone rang. Well, speak of the devil. Hello? The caller was my husband, Andrew. He had said that he would stop by his parents' house after work and we would all have dinner together. Oh, Sarah? It's me. Sorry, I can't seem to get away from work, so I don't think I can make it. Again? You did that last time too. Your mother has been waiting, cooking for you. Well, it's work, so I can't help it. And, she's happier to see you than me, so I'll ask you to take care of her. With that, he hung up the phone unilaterally. It's been like this lately. Mother-in-law, Andrew just told me that he can't make it again today. Oh, really? He completely neglects his fam other in law just like my divorced ex. As we were fussing over it, a voice came. Could you keep it down? I can hear you outside. The one who spoke was Andrew's younger brother, whom we'll call Tom. Tom, who's still single, lives with his mother in their fa mother in law home. Oh, sorry. Welcome home, Tom. I greet him, but he always just nods his head and heads straight to his room. He's such a cool guy, as usual. My mother-in-law often worries whether he's got someone special or not. Andrew and Tom may look alike, but unlike my sociable husband, Tom is rather quiet. Their brotherly relationship is neither too good nor too bad. I often hear about many people who are troubled by their difficult relationships with their in-laws, but I never had such worries. Sure, there were some concerns, but I was living a pretty happy life. Little did I know that I was about to get caught up in something. It was one day while I was at work. That day was the hottest day of the year. Typically on such days, we get a lot of heat stroke victims incoming. Seeing the patient who was brought in, I was shocked. It's my mother-in-law. The one accompanying my unconscious mother-in-law was Tom, and it seems she had collapsed in the yard when he got home. Gardening is a hobby of my mother-in-law's, and the yard is always filled with plants. The types of plants change with the seasons, and on nice days, one of her pleasures is to go out in the yard and have some tea. 
She was so absorbed in gardening, and it seems that she just collapsed from heat stroke. Tom looked worriedly at his mother. Please help my mom. I beg you. Seeing Tom's tearful face, I realized just how much he cherished his mother. As I told him that everything would be okay, I asked him. Have you told Andrew about this? Tom responded. I tried calling him several times, but he never answers. Is Andrew working today? Andrew should be off today. When I left for work, he was still sound asleep. No, he's off today. He might still be asleep. I'll contact him, Tom, could you handle mother-in-law's hospital admission procedures? Of course. Thank you very much. Fortunately, my mother-in-law just had mother-in-law dehydration. After some intravenous fluids, she regained consciousness and was even able to hold a conversation. Despite assuring us that she was fine, she ended up being hospitalized for a few days for further examination. I guess I pushed myself too hard and suddenly felt weak. I'm sorry for worrying you. Thanks, Tom. As she said this to Tom, he replied as always, Not a big deal. Keeping his cool demeanor. At this point, I finally remembered to call Andrew. After trying several times without response, groggy voice on the other end of the line finally answered. Hello? Ah, uh, Andrew, you finally answered. How long are you planning on sleeping? In response to me, Andrew replied lazily. Actually, I've been up and out for a while now. You know I haven't seen mom in a while, right? Thought I should do something nice for her, so I took her out to a fancy restaurant. Hearing Andrew spew such blatant lies, I realized the truth. I see, she must be happy. Yeah, she seemed really happy. She's so attached, it's almost troublesome. Anyway, because of that. As he was about to hang up, I said, Wait. There's something I wanted to ask mother-in-law. Could you put her on the line? Seeing how he seemed to panic at my request, he managed to croak out. Eh. No, she just went to the bathroom. I'll just pass on the message. That's okay. I'll just ask her myself next time I see her. Are you coming home early today? Sorry, but I have work after this. Tom tried calling me earlier too, but I figured it wasn't anything urgent, so I just ignored it. He said, as he laughed before abruptly ending the call. I had suspected it for a while, but it became clear that Andrew was having an affair. And it seemed like he was deeply infatuated with his mistress. I could almost imagine flowers blossoming in his mind. I wonder which field of flowers he's lost in. I won't let him get away with this. He better be ready. From that day on, I began plotting my revenge. The day I was certain of Andrew's betrayal, I packed my belongings and left our home. I left my wedding ring and a note that simply read be ready on the desk. I rented a hotel room near my workplace and started commuting from there. I've always been one to have little material desire. I had few possessions and, being a nurse, my salary was pretty decent. On my days off, I would often visit my in-laws, so I didn't spend much money. Ever since I got married, I haven't been able to save much for certain reasons. Though the idea of my money dwindling did worry me, I was planning on having Andrew pay back what was lost. Andrew got in touch with me the day after I left the house. Which means he must have gotten home in the morning. He clearly doesn't take me seriously. I got multiple calls, but I ignored them all. When he realized I wasn't going to pick up, he started bombarding me with messages. At first, they read like, Sarah, you must have misunderstood something, I'm worried, please come home, it was my fault, but over time they became more aggressive, hey. Respond to me. If you want a divorce, go ahead. 
you're the one who mentioned divorce, so I expect alimony. And then he would apologize again. Is he emotionally unstable or something? Reading his messages, I could tell he was getting desperate, so I decided it was time to take action. The following week, I visited the in-laws. Since that day, my mother-in-law had her tests, but no issues were found, so she was discharged as planned. That day, we had all gathered to celebrate her discharge. Thank you, Sarah, for organizing this wonderful gathering. I bought your favorite cake from that bakery you love, so let's eat it together later. When I told her that, she smother in law joyfully. So, how are things with that matter? Mother-in-law asks so. All the preparations are complete. I can't wait. When I said that, I grinned. As I was having a pleasant dinner with my mother-in-law, the doorbell rang. Seeing the person on the intercom screen, her face turned serious instantly. Seeing her reaction, I immediately knew who it was. Come in. When my mother-in-law said so coldly, the front door opened and the person I had been waiting for that day entered. Long time no see. It was Andrew whom I had invited, insisting he come because we needed to talk. Of course, I had already told my mother-in-law everything. Upon hearing about Andrew's infidelity from me, she was furious. But when I said that I'd like her to wait a bit, given that this is a marital issue, she just apologized over and over about her son. Seeing her like this made me feel guilty instead. Sarah, why didn't you contact me? I've been worried all this time. It's fine, it's fine. Cut the drama. I think you know, but divorce is the only option. Of course, I'll be taking alimony. Once the topic of money came up, my so far mature husband reacted. What? Why do I have to pay the alimony? Sarah should be the one to pay. Enough about money, money, money. I wondered if his head was all right, but thought I shouldn't get emotional to keep the conversation going. I calmly replied. Well, you see, you're the one who cheated. You're obviously the one at fault. And you're obviously the one who should pay the alimony. But, still. Seeing my husband mutter inaudibly, my until now sister-in-law and mother-in-law finally lost her patience. Andrew. You've been spouting nonsense. Just hurry up and get a divorce and pay the alimony to Sarah. And don't ever come here again. If you do, I'll bury you in the garden. As my mother-in-law was about to say something outrageous, I stepped in to stop her. Stop. Stop. Andrew, aren't you ashamed to put your parents through this? Here, sign this. Right now. Saying this, I placed the divorce papers I had prepared in front of Andrew. He looked shocked, perhaps he hadn't expected the talk of divorce. I was surprised that he thought he would be forgiven in this situation. Why did you come alone today? Didn't I ask you to bring her along? When I glared at him, he said. Seriously? I did talk to her and she seemed willing, so I brought her along, she's waiting in the car right now. I was irritated by my husband's mumbling, so I snapped, just go get her. Understanding, he left and returned with a woman. Excuse us. A woman entered with a grating voice. Seeing a woman show up with such energy at her affair partner's fa mother in law home, and in front of his wife and mother, no less, I thought she was as usual. Hi there, mother-in-law, nice to meet you. I'm Michelle. And, long time no see, Sarah. Seeing me, she chuckled. You're as usual, Michelle. I'm surprised you haven't changed at all. This wasn't a compliment, I was talking about her personality, not her appearance. She looked like a proper woman in her 30s. But her clothes and makeup made her look like a high school girl. It didn't suit her at all. Really? That's so nice. 
Maybe it's because I go to a good beauty salon. As for you, Sarah, have you aged a bit? She looked at me, then chuckled through her nose. Andrew, my husband, had a surprised look on his face when he saw Michelle and me. Eh, you two know each other? Yeah. We were classmates in high school. Haven't seen each other since we graduated, but who would have thought we'd meet again like this? When I answered, Andrew, for some reason, seemed relieved and said something outrageous. Oh, come on. You could have said that sooner. If she's your friend, then no alimony, right? That's good news, my Princess Michelle. Seems like I won't have to pay a dime. His ridiculously foolish statement left me utterly dumbfounded. No, we're not friends. And did he just call her princess? Gross. This reminded me of when Andrew and I first started dating, when he used to call me as my princess Sarah. It became so annoying that I had to make him stop. His nickname game is the worst. So gross. When I discovered Andrew's infidelity, I immediately sought a lawyer. As the investigation proceeded, I found out that the woman he was cheating with was Michelle. This woman has always been like this, seeming to fancy other women's men, constantly hitting on guys even if they already had girlfriends, often causing arguments. And it's not even like she's pretty. To be honest, her looks are below average. However, she's brimming with confidence, and probably thinks she's the prettiest woman in the room. I'm not really into social media and don't know much about it. According to a friend, Michelle would send messages without hesitation to any man she finds attractive. It appears that she met Andrew through social media. Michelle's job is basically a housemaid. I felt pathetic that my husband's mistress turned out to be a woman like her. I get tired talking to you too. Can you sign this quickly? When I said that, Andrew, who was hesitant about the divorce until now, readily signed the divorce papers. Apparently, he genuinely believes there's no alimony. Now I can finally be with Andrew. I'll always be your pretty wife. Nothing is more cringeworthy than a woman in her 30s acting like to be cutesy. Despite this, Andrew didn't seem to mind. I started to worry about his eyesight. So, mother-in-law, please get along with me from now on. When Michelle said this, my mother-in-law replied. Huh? No thanks. She answered with a deep, intimidating voice. Oh no, that's scary. As Michelle started to whine to my husband, Andrew, he started spouting nonsense about being unfair even though she's good friends with me. I was thinking someone ought to do something about these two when my brother-in-law, Tom, came home. Seeing the chaotic scene, he managed a wry mother-in-law, seemingly understanding the gist of the situation. Then, Michelle suddenly exclaimed. Wait! Isn't that Tom? No way! Are you the brother he mentioned? She seemed to be getting overly excited all by herself. As I wondered what had come over her, Tom responded. Long time no see, Michelle. Apparently, Michelle and Tom used to work at the same part-time job. Considering Tom's not bad looking, it's not surprising that Michelle had taken a liking to him. By the way, due to her terrible memory, Michelle ended up getting fired from that job, haha. <laughs> I'm going to be your new sister-in-law. Are you happy? Michelle swayed her body as she addressed Tom, to which he responded. Are you serious? That's the worst. My brother-in-law replied coldly. His cold response seemed to stun Michelle, who froze in place. Oh, this was sent to me by a friend. That's you, right? Tom then showed us a certain website. It was one of those unpleasant sites where people laugh at other people's social media posts. One person was frequently the butt of jokes on this site, with comments like, Michelle is exhausting today, too, and at this point, it's just a joke. Furthermore, 
Tom showed us one of Michelle's social media accounts. The photos were mostly selfies, making it obvious that they were of Michelle. Looking at Michelle out of the corner of my eye, thinking that this would surely upset her, she said. It's hard being popular. These are mostly just women being jealous. Oh well, whatever. Although she responded in that manner, it was clear she was less energetic than before. Even she seemed to have been hurt by this. Just because it's the internet doesn't mean you can write whatever you want. I couldn't help but feel a bit of sympathy for her in this case. Well, it doesn't matter. From now on, Andrew and I are going to live a glamorous life. Hearing these words, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. A glamorous life? No way! Could you stop acting tough because your husband got taken? It must be tough to lose a doctor husband, huh? At Michelle's words, we all burst into laughter. Wait, when did Andrew become a doctor? Congratulations! I was laughing so hard that Michelle looked utterly bewildered. Apparently, my husband had posted a picture of the hospital where I work on social media, along with the words another hard-working day. I remember he used to come pick me up after work. The post was meant for me, but she somehow misinterpreted it as Andrew's workplace. The equation of hospital equals doctor made me burst into laughter due to its simplistic nature. But Andrew was always generous with money and even took me to a fancy restaurant the other day. He also paid for my spa appointments. As Michelle continued, it was clear she was starting to panic. I didn't think my husband had much money, which was puzzling. When I asked him about the source of the money, he let out an astonishing revelation. I used Sarah's credit card. Even if we're fam mother in law using a credit card in someone else's name is illegal. But my main card is still in my wallet. I used it to pay for a hotel just the other day. So, whose card did he use? As I was wondering this, he returned the card. Well, what's done is done. Besides, we're still married. Look, this is a fam mother in law card. It's your card. He must have forgotten, but we got this fam mother in law card when we got married because there was a campaign to increase points. I have my own card, so I've never used it. Therefore, of course, the payment this time was from his account. You still have your severance pay from your previous job, right? You'll figure it out. As I said this with a smother-in-law, his face turned pale. He used to work for a fairly decent company. His diligent work was valued, and he even became a team leader. However, after being married for a while, he suddenly quit his job. He claimed the reason was me. As a nurse, I often worked night shifts and sometimes earned more than him. This apparently hurt his pride, and he started saying things like, If Sarah's making money, I don't have to work, right? But I didn't mind that at all. My husband, Andrew, did help out with the chores around the house, which was beneficial. However, it was indeed tough having to bear the cost of living all by myself. Almost all my salary went towards living expenses and I had no room to save. Andrew always made up some excuse to avoid visiting my in-law's house, probably because he didn't want my mother-in-law nagging about this issue. I was naive to think that he would someday find a steady job. Desiring some pocket money, Andrew announced. I got a job. He started working part-time at a convenience store near the train station and has been promoted to team leader. Listening to my story, Michelle muttered. Convenience store. Team leader. She was mumbling something under her breath, then suddenly stood up, exclaiming. You've been lying to me. You're the worst. I'm going to sue you. I'm leaving. She ran off like a scared rabbit. Watching her retreating figure, I thought to myself, It's you who's going to get sued, sorry to say. I muttered so in my mind. 
After the storm passed, the room was eerily sister in law -ant. Breaking the sister in law was. Well, that's how it is. Sarah, let's get alone from now on. It was my sister in law husband, Andrew. I was dumbfounded at his stupidity. When Andrew tried to put his arm around me. My former judo team captain brother-in-law, Tom, performed a beautiful throw on him. When I saw my mother-in-law exclaiming, What a throw! I had to stifle my laughter. Andrew apparently had some judo experience, but he looked quite foolish, taken by surprise. As for what happened after, I quickly filed for divorce. Andrew paid me alimony from a term deposit that had matured before we got married. He showed up at my workplace once after the divorce in a pitiful manner, but after I threatened to call the police if he showed up again, he never did. I thought about claiming damages from Michelle as well, but honestly, I didn't want to deal with her anymore. I didn't need to do anything, I knew she would face hardship in the future. During a consultation with a lawyer, I learned something about Michelle. About the woman your husband cheated with, We've received consultations from other people as well, and I believe she will definitely be punished. Apparently, Michelle was involved with many people, not just my husband, and there were over 10 victims, including people whose marriages had been ruined or who had lent her money and been run out on. She definitely needs to pay for her actions. A few days later, a friend from high school showed me a viral video on social media where victims were gathered in front of Michelle's house shouting, Give back our money, and we'll never forgive you. It became such a scene that the police had to be called in. And there in her home, a woman was shouting from her window, I did nothing wrong. What surprised me was that my ex-husband, Andrew, was among the crowd of victims. I felt truly relieved to have divorced such a foolish man. As for my former in-laws, I thought I wouldn't see my former mother-in-law after the divorce, but we still occasionally go out to eat as friends. Surprisingly, a while after all this, my former brother-in-law, Tom, said, I'm getting married. He even introduced me to his cute girlfriend. Apparently, they've been dating since high school. He's transferred to a reputable company, and as my former brother-in-law, he even kindly invited me to his wedding. I couldn't believe that this diligent Tom was a brother to my former husband. I believe that Tom, being so earnest, will surely build a good fa mother in law -y. With that thought, I decided to continue doing my best as a proud nurse. Today marks the 50th anniversary of my marriage with my husband. As we each began to eat, our granddaughter Amelia appeared on the verge of tears, showing signs of unease. I wonder what's wrong with Amelia. As I was about to voice my concern, she tugged at her mom, Mia's sleeve, with a tearful voice, appealing. Mom, I need to go pee pee. Faced with her appeal, Mia's expression turned ice cold as she bluntly told Amelia. What a hassle! Just go in your diaper. I couldn't comprehend Mia's words. The thought of letting Amelia just wet herself in a diaper, despite her expressing the need to urinate, was beyond belief to me. A wet diaper would be heavy and uncomfortable for Amelia. Unable to hold back, I opened my mouth to reprimand Mia. Before I could speak, a clear voice echoed. Hey, Auntie. It's not right to use Amelia for likes. The room fell silent at the unexpected intervention. It was our grandson, Paul. Following his words, Mia was visibly flustered and left speechless. My daughter Madison seemed to realize something and pulled out her mobile phone. Paul, by likes, do you mean this? The screen of the mobile phone she pulled out displayed a popular video sharing website. The secret to a three-year-old girl's mom's way of handling her child. Next to a cute illustrated icon, there was a biography written. Amelia is a three-year-old girl. Could the poster of this video account possibly be Mia? Madison, 
Could you let me see that video? Receiving the mobile phone from Madison, I tapped on the top video of the video account. Displayed was. My name is Isabella. I turned 67 this year. Always putting family first, I've been married to Stephen, who has always been protective, for 50 years. We live modestly as I'm a housewife, and together we lead a simple, happy life. Though not lavish, our days are peaceful and joyful. My husband and I have two children. Our son, Matthew, and our daughter, Madison. It's often said how quickly children grow up, and I truly believe it. Our once needy little children have grown up, married, and left the nest. Matthew got married right after graduating from college. When he introduced us to his college classmate Mia as his spouse, I was surprised at their haste. But as long as they were happy, that was all that mattered to us. Our daughter Madison found her match at work and after living together for two years, they got married. Her partner was her direct supervisor. He visited us to formally announce their engagement, impeccably dressed in a suit without a wrinkle. He was just as Madison had described, sincere and serious. Both Stephen and I felt reassured. Both Matthews and Madison's families bought their homes not far from where my husband and I live, making it easy for them to visit often. It's a joy to have our grown children come to see us. We're blessed with grandchildren too. My first grandchild, Paul, is Madison's firstborn son. Two years after Paul was born, Matthew and Mia were blessed with a daughter, Amelia. The grandchildren are growing up well, with Paul now a lively five-year-old. The last time he visited, he proudly showed off his new bag, excited for starting school next year. Amelia, at the age of three, has recently started to show interest in fashion. She's a well-behaved child for her age, with many friends at the childcare center, a kind soul. The grandchildren attend the same childcare center near my house, filled with memories from when Matthew and Madison were young. The childcare center filled with memories, once attended by both Matthew and Madison. Even though I felt a deep loneliness when our children left home, being able to see them and now their children so easily fills me with immense happiness. My joy comes from seeing my children and my adorable grandchildren. However, there's one thing that I can't help but worry about. It's how often Matthew's wife, Mia, drops off Amelia at our house. I'm truly happy to see Amelia. She's a three-year-old granddaughter who's rapidly gaining knowledge, and I'm amazed at her growth every time I see her. But, the frequency is just too much. After leaving Amelia with us, Mia would head out dressed extravagantly. Since Matthew works late, the care of Amelia falls mostly on my husband Stephen and me. Gradually, Mia started to rely on me for dropping off and picking up Amelia from the childcare center, sometimes not seeing Mia until it was almost the next day. Grandma, where's mom? Isn't she coming to pick me up yet? Amelia would ask me with a sad face when Mia would come to pick her up. Amelia is still three years old. She must be in her prime time for seeking her mom's affection. Every time my adorable granddaughter made a sad face, it felt as if my heart was being squeezed tight. To leave such a small child like Amelia. What could Mia be doing after leaving Amelia with me? Amelia, it's okay. Mom will come to pick you up soon. Every time Amelia looked sad, all I could do was hug her gently. On a cloudless, sunny Sunday. As usual, Mia brought Amelia over. Good morning, Mom. I'm sorry to ask, but could you please take care of Amelia today too? Mia, wearing a short skirt and carrying an expensive-looking bag. Come on, hurry up! Urged Mia. As Amelia walked over to me, she grabbed my hand with her small one. Without saying a word to Amelia, Mia just said to me, I'll be back tonight, and hurried off. As Mia's figure shrank in the distance and eventually disappeared, 
Amelia looked down sadly. Amelia! Look, today's such a beautiful day. How about we go to the park together? I suggested going to the park to lighten her spirits a bit. Her expression brightened. Go to the park! I was glad to see my granddaughter smile. With that thought, I gently stroked Amelia's head. The park with a large elephant-shaped slide, Amelia's favorite, is about a 20-minute walk from our house. As we walked hand in hand to the park, someone called out to us. A woman around my age, Garcia, who has lived in the neighborhood for a long time. She approached me and Amelia and said something unbelievable. Oh my, Isabella. Is this your granddaughter, Amelia? Matthew really married a good woman, didn't he? I couldn't understand her words. I can't think of Mia as a good wife. How could a mom who leaves her child every day to go out be considered a good wife? Stunned, I froze for a moment before asking. Garcia, what do you mean by that? Mia, she's taking care of Amelia by herself since Matthew comes home late, right? She seems to be well-educated and has money, so Amelia's future is secure. Children shouldn't have to suffer because of money issues, Garcia said with a laugh. Strange. No matter how much I try, the Mia in my mind doesn't match the Mia in Garcia's. Trying not to show my confusion, I replied nonchalantly and continued to the park with Amelia. That night, after 8 p.m., Mia came. After playing a lot in the park and sliding down her favorite elephant slide five times, Amelia, tired from all the excitement, had fallen asleep. Carefully lifting the small body so as not to wake her, I handed her over to Mia's arms. As I was about to ask Mia what she has been doing by leaving Amelia with me. Be careful. Amelia might wake up she said hurriedly and left. Even after Mia and Amelia had gone, Garcia's words kept running through my head. Mia, the mom who's wealthy and well-educated. The Mia I know is always out after leaving Amelia with me, and considering she graduated from the same local, small college as Matthew, I couldn't see her as wealthy. That college is hardly famous. Matthew also complained the last time we met that he works late every day but hardly gets paid, and I've never seen any sign that they have financial leeway. He said their monthly income is about average. Moreover, Mia is a housewife and does not work. I couldn't imagine Matthew's family having a high household income. Isabella, what's wrong? You look troubled. Looking at me with concern. Stephen must have noticed something was off. After 50 years of marriage, we've shared and overcome everything together. I couldn't keep anything from him. I told Stephen about what Garcia had said. Stephen knew how sad Amelia felt being left with us by Mia every day. Yet, the notion of Garcia seeing Mia as a wealthy, well-educated mom felt odd to share. Stephen listened quietly to my story. After hearing me out, Stephen seemed to ponder for a while before saying, So, that happened. He then took out the mobile phone he recently learned to use from Madison and started making a call. I watched Stephen on the phone for a while. I couldn't hear the other end of the conversation well enough to understand what was being said. But, Stephen always leads me in the right direction. Talking to him made my heart feel a bit lighter. I closed my eyes, wishing nothing but happiness for Amelia. A week passed, and I was sitting on the living room sofa, knitting, which is my hobby, when the phone rang. I rushed to answer it. Hello, Mom? It's your 50th wedding anniversary with Dad this year, right? Madison and I were talking, and we want to celebrate. Do you have any free days? It was my son, Matthew. He proposed gathering both our families, his and Madison's, to celebrate our anniversary. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. 
Stephen is off on Saturdays and Sundays, so either day is fine. I informed Matthew of Stephen's days off. I was thrilled at the thought of our children and grandchildren wanting to celebrate our anniversary. The following Saturday night, all three families gathered for the first time in a while. A glamorous, high-end restaurant known for its hospitality. Matthew had made the reservation. Wow! This is so luxurious! As soon as we entered, Mia excitedly began taking photos of the interior. Here, Amelia, stand there. Oh, move a bit to the right. She was taking multiple photos of Amelia next to an expensive-looking painting. Taking photos in a high-end restaurant is generally not seen as appropriate. It can disrupt the ambience and the sound of the shutter can be intrusive, so it's polite to ask staff permission before taking pictures. Mia seemed oblivious, continuing to snap away. I was honestly concerned but didn't want to spoil the celebratory mood, so I silently watched Mia's actions. Thank you for waiting. The staff brought over the food. The table was adorned with dishes that looked like delicate works of art. Now that the food is here, let's say it again. Dad, Mom, happy 50th wedding anniversary. Here's to. Before Matthew could finish. Wait a minute. Mia interrupted loudly. We need to take photos of the food before anyone touches it. So, wait. I was taken aback. Stephen sitting next to me looked just as dismayed. Sitting across from me, Madison couldn't hold back and said, Mia, hold on. Today is about celebrating dad and mom. It's not the place for taking photos. That's bad manners. Mia, upon being told off by Madison, made a displeased face and put her mobile phone down, turning away in a huff. Matthew looked uncomfortable, hanging his head. Dad, Mom. Once again, from me. Happy 50th wedding anniversary. Madison, Matthew. Thank you. Although Mia's sulky behavior was concerning, Madison's words were a joy to hear. As we each started to eat, Amelia seemed restless. Showing a face like she was about to cry, looking uneasy. I wondered what was wrong with Amelia. As I was about to express my concern, she tugged at Mia's sleeve, with a tearful voice, appealing. Mom. I need to go pee pee. Mia, faced with her plea, displayed an icy cold expression before bluntly telling Amelia. What a hassle! Just use your diaper! I couldn't understand Mia's words. The idea of telling Amelia to just wet herself in a diaper despite expressing the need to urinate was unbelievable to me. A wet diaper would become heavy and uncomfortable for Amelia. I couldn't bear it and opened my mouth to scold Mia. Before I could speak, a clear voice rang out. Hey, Auntie. Amelia is a person, not a toy. The unexpected intervention brought silence to the room. It was Madison's son, Paul. With a stern expression, Paul continued. It's not right to use Amelia for likes. Mia, faced with Paul's words, was visibly shaken and left speechless. Mia's treatment towards Amelia was too much to overlook. Too cruel for a mom. Madison seemed to realize something and took out her mobile phone. Paul, are you talking about this by any chance? The screen displayed a popular video-sharing website. The secret to handling a three-year-old girl by her mom. Next to a cute illustrated icon, there was a biography written. Amelia is a three-year-old girl. Could the poster of this video account possibly be Mia? Yes. This is yours, right? Chloe's mom showed it to me when I went to Chloe's house. I recalled Madison mentioning Chloe's mom before. Madison and Chloe's mom, being the same age and due to Paul and Chloe getting along well, were close friends. 
Madison, could I see that video, please? Receiving the mobile phone from Madison, I tapped on the top video listed on the account. The title read, How to Get a Three-Year-Old Who Hates Going to the Toilet to Go. A Busy Day of Solo Parenting by Mom Thinking how Mia always leaves Amelia with me, claiming solo parenting, I watched the video. It showed Amelia crying and Mia scolding her harshly. Knowing Amelia well from our time together, I was certain. Though her face wasn't clearly shown, this was Amelia. I recognized the flashy clothes of the mom, the same ones Mia wore when she came to pick up Amelia. Mia's tone in the video was too harsh. Just listen and go to the bathroom. Mia, grabbing Amelia's arm and raising her voice, must have been holding on tightly. Amelia's thin arm appeared bruised in the video. A chill went down my spine. This was too much. With trembling hands, I tapped on the video titled, The Three-Year-Old Who Dislikes Everything. How to Fix Picky Eating. It played Mia forcibly stuffing carrots into Amelia's mouth, who complained they were too hard to eat. The video titled, Sometimes Mom Needs a Break. How to Put Your Child to Sleep Alone showed Mia locking a protesting Amelia in the bedroom to have a drink alone. Seeing the content, I couldn't believe this was discipline. I felt the blood drain from my face. Mia! What is this supposed to mean? I turned to Mia, holding back rising anger, and asked quietly. That's not me. It's someone else entirely. Mia, with her eyes darting back and forth, rapidly insisted. Clearly, something was off. That's Mia's video. The person in the video is her. Stephen stated firmly. I heard from Isabella the other day. Garcia from the neighborhood said that Mia is a wealthy mom who takes care of Amelia alone while Matthew is away, and she's very dedicated to education. Hearing that made me very curious. So, I decided to check. The room fell silent as Stephen's voice echoed. Mia froze, her eyes wide open, her body trembling slightly. I called Garcia to ask about Mia. Mia, you asked Garcia to follow this account because you were the one posting, didn't you? I remembered discussing with Stephen what I had heard from our neighbor Garcia. The person Stephen had been on the phone with that time was indeed Garcia. Madison, having listened to Stephen, looked startled and stood up. I've heard that too. Mia was going around at the child care center asking other kids' moms to follow her video account. You wanted to become a famous video creator and asked for their support, right? Recalling Paul's words that Chloe's mom had told him, I was surprised. Paul, Chloe, and Amelia all attend the same child care center. It makes sense that Chloe's mom would have heard about Mia's video account. Madison's follow-up made Mia's face turn bright red as she shouted. That's not true. I didn't ask anyone. I just said if they wanted to follow, I could tell them. I said I would tell you if you followed me. Mia's words echoed in my mind. I was convinced. So, that video account was indeed Mia's. Mia, you said earlier it wasn't you, but this is you, isn't it? I pointed to the video showing Mia scolding Amelia from behind. Mia seemed to realize she had slipped up, her face turning pale. Watching this, Paul murmured. Getting angry and telling her to go to the toilet, or telling her to use a diaper based on how you feel. If you decide that way, Amelia would be troubled. Paul's confident words made Mia slump in defeat. Seeing this, Matthew stood up hastily, sitting down on the floor. His eyes firmly met ours. I didn't realize anything until Paul pointed it out. I've been staying late at work to increase our income, not understanding what was happening at home. Tears welled up in Matthew's eyes, his voice trembling. 
I didn't know Mia was constantly leaving Amelia with mom and dad, causing trouble and ruining a joyful occasion. I'm truly sorry to Amelia too. Matthew deeply apologized. Tears fell onto Matthew's knees. He promised us he would talk with Mia once they got home. Hoping for Matthew and Amelia's future happiness, I watched until Matthew, taking Mia and Amelia, was out of sight. A few days later, as I was preparing dinner in the kitchen, the doorbell rang. Opening the door, I saw Matthew. Mom, sorry for the sudden visit. May I come in? Matthew had a serious look on his face. I sensed he had something important to discuss. Of course. This is your home, too. Come on in. I ushered Matthew into the dining room, next to the chair where Stephen was sitting. Matthew sat down across from us and began. Dad, Mom, sorry for barging in like this. After talking with Mia, I've decided to divorce her. I came today to explain properly. Matthew's voice was steady, his resolve clear. I found out that Mia was habitually too harsh on Amelia. I confirmed it with Amelia. Moreover, she had accumulated a significant debt from consumer loans. I had a feeling about what Matthew was saying. That day when Mia's video account came to light, Stephen and I had reviewed Mia's video account together. Mia's posted videos mainly consisted of disciplining Amelia and showcasing high-end brand bags and clothing. The neighbor, Garcia, thought Mia was wealthy after seeing her videos featuring luxury brand bags. She hadn't watched the videos where Mia scolded Amelia, only glanced at the titles and mistakenly believed Mia was thoroughly educating her. The luxury items Mia showcased easily surpassed $10,000. I wondered how she could afford such expensive purchases. Was that debt for buying the brand items Mia showcased in her videos? Matthew nodded in response to my question. Mia had incurred debt to buy luxury items and feature them on her video account. The amount ballooned as she kept borrowing more to repay her debts. Matthew was unaware of the situation because Mia disposed of any collection notices before he could see them. Publicizing luxury brands and parenting videos attracted many views and attention. Mia felt superior by garnering attention, focusing only on what would shine the most. She avoided confronting the growing debt, choosing to escape reality by going out drinking. While leaving Amelia with me. After explaining, Matthew apologized to us. Dad, Mom. From now on. I'll prioritize Amelia over work. I'm truly sorry for the trouble I've caused. Matthew. He mentioned he discussed the divorce and custody of Amelia with Mia again and then left. A few days later, Matthew called. Mom? I'll be living with Amelia from now on. Matthew and Mia had disputed Amelia's custody and reached an agreement today. Despite Mia's claim to Amelia's custody, Amelia expressed her wish to stay with Matthew. When Matthew presented the excessive scolding and confirmed Amelia's preference, Mia couldn't argue, and they agreed that Matthew would retain custody. You could hear the happiness in Matthew's voice even through the phone. After the divorce, Mia's reputation quickly deteriorated and she left town. A year passed. Matthew sold the house and now lives with us and Amelia. Mia, reportedly living alone in a distant town's old apartment, is working hard to pay child support and her debts. On a cloudless, sunny Sunday noon, Madison and Paul visited, hearing laughter from the yard while knitting on the sofa. I joined Stephen outside. Stephen, I heard such happy voices, I had to come. Amelia and Paul were joyfully playing ball, watched affectionately by Matthew and Madison. Stephen, I'm so glad. Seeing them happy like this makes me truly happy. Stephen squeezed my hand in agreement. 
holding his hand back, we watched our children and grandchildren in the yard. I wished Mia had seen Amelia's smiling face instead of focusing solely on her video account's followers and views. Amelia's radiant smile shone brightly in the sunlight. We resolved to protect that smile from now on. Deep in my heart, I felt this strongly.